And we are back with the fifth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And before I go into the player who I feel like doesn't deserve the MVP, um, there is some uh, news that I do want to mention that I completely, um, for some reason, just did not include in the last segment. And Steph Curry recently signed a one-year $62.6 million contract with the Golden State Warriors. And this extension is going to keep him under contract with the Warriors through the 2026 and 2027 NBA season. And um, this is according to Woj. And so, you know, they're going to, the Warriors are going to have Steph under contract for one more year. So it's really, it's going to be interesting to see exactly where and what team he's going to end up on. So I just wanted to, you know, touch on that. I might do another segment on that, talking a little bit deeper about this deal tomorrow. But um, again, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this. Do you guys think this is a good thing? For the, um, do you think this is a good thing for the Warriors? Do you think this is a bad thing, or do you think that um, it's um, it'll be like I guess maybe like a neutral thing for um, for both teams? But let me know what you guys think in the comments about both of those um, about those moves, and um, we'll go ahead and continue with our regularly scheduled fifth segment, which is going to be talking about a player who I feel like does, didn't deserve to win an MVP. So we're still in the we're still in the 90s, but for the sake of um, talking like um, being, I guess you could say, consistent in like the time frame and when each MVP happened, like. I'm, I want to do it like in the order of the MVPs that they came in. And the reason why I'm doing this is because that I feel like in both of the years that this player won the MVP, I don't think he should have won it in either of the years. And I think the same player should have won the MVP in both of the years. Yes, the same player that I'm talking about is Michael Jordan. I think he should have won the MVP. And the player who I'm talking about is, of course, Magic Johnson. Now... Magic, he ended up winning an MVP in 1989 and in 1990. So those were the two years that Magic Johnson ended up winning the MVP um, after, uh, like, or I guess you could say where I think he doesn't deserve it because Magic Johnson did end up winning a regular season MVP award. In um, He retired with three of those. So he ended up winning another MVP um, in 1987, but I have no problem with him winning the MVP in that year. But uh, when you looked, when you look at Magic's career going into uh, 1989, uh, a lot of people see the five championships that he was able to grab during that time, but a lot of people were also able to see how. Magic, despite the fact that he had five titles, only had one MVP to display his uh, his dominance, right? And towards the end of his career, like towards the latter half of his, you know, his really long and great NBA career, like the prime of his career, I should say, like towards the end of it, because like Magic Johnson, the best years of Magic, you could argue it was like it was from when he started, all the way down to um, nineteen to nineteen ninety one, right? And um, heck, you could even argue that maybe his best year was um, it wasn't even like um, it ended in nineteen ninety. You could argue that like that's exactly when his prime ended. But again, um, the way that the um, the way that the MVP voting and the way that it was constructed and the way that it worked, some might argue um, a little bit differently. But anyways, the um, you looked at Magic in um, with his career, and he has he has ridiculous um he has a lot of postseasons, and he has a lot of postseason wins. He has a lot of postseason rings. He has a lot of finals MVPs, but he doesn't have a lot of regular season MVPs. And it seemed like towards the end 
of his career that most of the uh, voters sort of, um, it, it seemed like most of the voters were trying to force Magic's way into winning as many MVPs, if not more MVPs, than the uh, than Larry Bird did in his career. Remember, Larry Bird won three MVPs, so it only makes sense that um, Larry and Magic end up winning, end up their careers, like you know, f having the same amount of MVPs. That's uh, it's only poetic that they do that. So, um, but in this specific year, in 1989. There's like no real reason for Magic to win the award over somebody like Michael Jordan. Like Magic Johnson, he averaged a ridiculous 23, 8, and 13 uh, per game. Like he had the advantages in the assists and he also had the advantages in team record, but Michael Jordan had the advantages in everything else, averaging 33 points per game, 8 rebounds, 8 assists and as well as shooting 53% from the field. And, you know, his advanced numbers completely destroy Magic Johnson's, and it's like if, you were, if I were to give the vote to anybody in um, that year, I would give it to Michael Jordan. Because, like, I mean, let's face it, in 1989, we all know that Michael Jordan was the best player in the NBA. I mean, not to mention, I didn't even mention that he was almost averaging three i didn't mention that he was averaging like almost three steals in that year as well like he was averaging 2.9 steals per game which is um basically three and like while his three-point percentage wasn't all there in the 1989 postseason um not postseason but in the 1989 regular season it wasn't all there in the previous years either and in last in the last season in 1988 he ended up winning the mvp and he was shooting 13 percent from three so <coughs> excuse me but i mean it's not really a um it's not really a problem mind you it's just like you know i'm just nitpicking here a little bit and the um i if you were paying attention then you would have noticed that i mentioned that um magic ended up um like you know before 1989, Magic ended up having only one MVP, and he needed to get the same as Larry. And if you paid attention, I said Larry had three MVPs. So that would mean that between 1989 and between Magic retired, so 1992, like, something like that, Magic would have had to win one more MVP. So uh, the... He ended up winning back-to-back -back MVPs, and he won in nineteen. He won in nineteen eighty-nine, and then he won in nineteen ninety. And it's basically the same story, where um, it was the last MVP that Magic needed to tie Larry in total MVPs. And you know, in order, like I said, in order to tie him, they just needed to have him there to sort of. Um, um, like they needed to have him there to win the award again and magic again he held the advantages in team record and in assists but michael jordan once again dominated everywhere else it's like it was basically the exact same story from what it was last season magic averaged 22 points 12 um assists and six rebounds but michael jordan averaged 34 points six um assists and seven rebounds as well so it's like the um the the numbers are close to the same the story is close to the same it's more or less just like a repeat of the previous year and really the big difference is just like how the voting took place as well because the crazy part about it is that in 1990 michael jordan wasn't even second place in the mvp voting no he ended up he ended up getting third place despite, you know, averaging 34, 6, and 7. And Charles Barkley ended up getting the MVP, um, well, not the MVP, but he ended up getting the most first place votes in the MVP race, but somehow ended up getting second place. So this MVP was literally just given to Magic to tie Larry Bird because 
Charles, he shouldn't, he should, like, technically, he should have won the MVP because he ended up getting the most first place votes. This is the first and only time in the history of the NBA where um, an MVP, like um, an MVP caliber player, um, ended up getting the most first place votes, but didn't end up winning. And it's like, that's, it's kind of ridiculous how that happened. And it's also kind of ridiculous how um, it happened to Barkley. Like, of course it happened to Barkley. Like, that's one less MVP that he has to talk about. But I mean, that's, what, what can you, what can you do? as an NBA player. But that's all that I have today on this podcast. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this segment. If you guys, do you guys think that the voting was wrong in both of those years? Would you rather see Charles Barkley win an MVP? Would you rather see Michael Jordan win the MVP? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And again, thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so remember to uh, subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. Um, It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. And we do love to hear what you guys have to say for the show. And if you really want your comment or question to get mentioned, then you can use Super Chat and just click the dollar sign below the chat box, send in your message. It's guaranteed to get featured on the show. It's a great way to support our channel. If Super Chat isn't really your thing, you can always go ahead and use the link displayed below the ticker on every show segment, gsmcpodcast.net. Either or, it really helps the show. And um, thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast today. And I am your host, Nelson, and I'm going to be here once again tomorrow, same time at um you know 12 30 to do the um segment once again so i will um i'll see you guys until then so uh take care and have a good one let's go i wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow feel like it's gonna be a bad day yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. Nice. I don't wanna go.